Hello, it's 1567 in Sengoku Jidai era Japan, and it's time for us to finish chapter 3 of The Legend of Nobunaga. There's one more battle, it's the Siege of Inabayama Castle, a uh, very important battle for Nobunaga, and also a very important battle for uh, Tokichiro Kinoshita, Nobunaga's uh, number one retainer, and there he is, I must deploy him along with Nobunaga Oda. So I need to attack this castle and eliminate Katsuoki, Saito, leader of the Saito clan, the longtime rival of the Oda. So it's time to get in there and, uh, well, get on with it, really. The time has come to put an end to this. Let us march! Sir! <laughs> the Siege of Inabayama. So Inabayama, as I said at the end of the last part, it's very well fortified, so we're going to need to uh, pull out something good to uh, capture it without some massive losses. The butterfly motif is one of the themes of Kesson 3. There's a lot of butterfly-esque things, and this is one of the principal I love butterfly scenes, so let's watch it. It's quite nice. It must be difficult attacking home. Mm, that's not it. Seeing such beauty before me makes it all seem like a bad dream. A dream, huh? Ever since I was a boy, I keep having the same dream. Dream? A dark place. Flames, death, an awful dream. He's foreseeing his death. Poor guy. And I have an unknown mark. In the place I was shot in my dream. I once heard a tale. A man dreamt he was a butterfly. And upon waking the next day, wondered if he wasn't just a butterfly, dreaming he was a man. <laughs> One of the, uh, the world famous idioms, I guess. Of the, uh, the Eastern world. It. it doesn't seem like such a relevant thing, but Nobunaga seems pretty uh, reassured by it. <laughs> so it's good that Kisha whipped out that story. She has a butterfly on her blouse, so she's pretty uh, obsessed with butterflies. So I guess she was just waiting for a chance to tell that story. Let us begin. So it's war council time. What say our scouts? Our scouts have come back with the following reports. So we need to check out the castle and uh, try and find a way up there. It's on top of a huge hill in a Biyama castle. It towers over the landscape around it. You can actually go we there in real life, so it's, uh, it's still there. The enemy commander, Tatsuoki Saito. We must destroy the gate, then move to the main enclosure where Saito is located. <laughs> Seems easy enough, right? S still, we hear that the enemy has prepared strong defenses oh. and are waiting for our attack. Hanbei Takanaka of Inabayama is an excellent strategist. He will not be easy. Really? Really? Huh? He's that good? Well then, I'd certainly like to meet and talk with him at least once. <laughs> My lord. So that there... We deploy for this it battle? was a little nod towards the fact that uh, Tokushiro Kinoshita actually persuaded lots of the Mino officers to defect and uh, Hanbei is one of the main ones, one of them. Um, one of Mino's great strategists, and Tokichiro indeed did persuade him to join. So we have Tokichiro and Nobunaga on this little path up to the mountain. Uh, and the, uh, the castle itself has these destroyable gates defended by towers, so that's how we're going to get in. We can destroy the gates. So I need to deploy some uh, support units. Now of course the big thing about the siege of Inabuyama Castle was that uh, Tokichiro read a <laughs> sorry, led a commando raid to back attack the castle. So we're attacking from the south here with the main force. He attacked the north of the castle, which has a sheer rock face. So they weren't expecting anyone to try and get up that sheer rock face. But he climbed it with, uh, with the commando team. Uh, but for some reason the game, at least to begin with, makes Tokichiro part of the main assault on the front. Of course, the Nobunaga was basically just camping in front of the castle. He didn't really attack until um, after Tokushiro Kinoshita had begun his shenanigans on the north side of the castle. So what would have really been happening at the moment is Nobunaga would be sitting in his camp, 
he was very confident he was going to win in this battle. Uh, the game doesn't really show that at all. Nobunaga was pretty much sure he would win because he had discussed this plan with Tokichiro in advance and he was very very sure that the commander raid would be successful. Uh, so he was just sitting there and he was basically mocking the Mino officers. There's um, We saw them, I think two episodes back, we saw the Mino 3 which were some of Saito's main officers, and he uh, very much mocked them during this battle. He offered them, uh, <laughs> like invited them out for drinks and things from his main camp whilst they were trying to defend the castle. He was uh, being pretty casual about it. We saw that on the conditions, it said there's a secret area in the castle. This we can all concentrate and I think I do fight. find that eventually. <laughs> it took all me a right, while. Let's move out. Remember, we fight for the land and for peace. Good old peace. Sir! Right, so... So far, the plan is just walk up to the castle. So hopefully, when the battle starts, we'll be able to pull up something a little bit more impressive than that. Mino will not be ours until Inabayama falls. Oh! Yay! Right, so the battle started, and I just well just push up the hill. So Tokichiro and I gave him Toshie as a escort are coming up with me. Uh, I really should have given him Kuroda. Uh, Kuroda is. Not Karuda. Koroku, sorry. Oh, here we go. Lord Nobunaga! There is a hidden approach to the castle! <laughs> I hope oh, they can't hear me! So he suddenly decides to go up the hidden approach from the north, and he just disappears, and he reappears at the top of the map. So that was convenient. The commander raid just sort of happens instantly. So he's now inside the castle, he's suddenly infiltrated it. And uh, I basically just leave him there, because I didn't want him to do the raid until I was ready to attack one of the final redoubts in the castle. I wanted to break through the first lines of defense the on my own and then link up with Hideyoshi. So I leave... I have not Hideyoshi, Tino, Tokichiro Kinoshita. Um, so I leave him there in waiting for now. Um, I guess while I break through these first levels, I'll tell you what really happened. What really happened with Hideyoshi's attack. I keep calling him Hideyoshi. It, it might probably quite confusing for you, but Tokichiro Kinoshita and Hideyoshi Hashiba are the same person, and I keep <laughs> using those names interchangeably uh, because he's famous for the latter name. Tokichiro Kinoshita is the name he's not famous for, but the name he has in the game at this stage. <laughs> so it's a bit confusing. So what happened was he uh, he devised this plan, or potentially Nobunaga devised the plan actually, for uh, this raid on the north side of the castle, climbing up a sheer rock face and causing some ruckus in order to allow Nobunaga's main force, which he had about 12,000 troops in his main force, Victory to storm the castle out. and uh, just try and capture it. So, Tokichiro Kinoshita was chosen to lead this raid, and then he chose um, Koroku. Koroku is the bandit -east sort of guy we saw when we were first introduced to Tokichiro. He was, um, he was a bandit leader that Tokichiro worked with whilst he was younger, and that he dragged into Nobunaga's forces with about a thousand troops to help in the battle of Okazama. Uh, but he uh, continued to serve with Oda after that. So he chose to take Koroku with him, and he uh, probably took about six, six, seven, eight other men. He had basically about ten troops, let's just say it was ten. He took ten men to, to scale this rock face on the north side of the castle. They did this in the dead of night. And meanwhile, Nobunaga had set up his army ready to assault at dawn uh, of the same day. So Tokichiro was climbing up and he finally reaches the uh, the very inside of the castle, the castle keep, with this small band of ten men. And it's still the dead of night so he was undetected at this stage. Uh, so he sneaks inside and he discovers a huge store of gunpowder inside the castle and uh, <laughs> he took the opportunity that this gave him to cause a distraction and cause chaos. So he hid until dawn and as the main assault began he detonated the, the gunpowder store inside the castle and caused an enormous fire and a whole bunch of noise and chaos and the defenders of the castle had no idea what was going on. They just saw explosions going off everywhere and they thought they were under some sort of serious heavy attack up the north Victories face. So what they did was move a whole bunch of troops off the front that Nobunaga was attacking to the north front to Press face off against attack. some fake attack which they assumed was coming. And also quite a lot of the troops uh, surrendered straight away at that point I seem to seem to remember. Quite a lot of them at least. Because um, when they saw the chaos and they also saw like Tokichiro and his band of ten men were running about like crazy men. Like running about in the castle keep just killing everyone. 
and running about outside in plain view across the uh, the yards outside of the castles, like this one that Nobunaga is in now, just cutting down anyone they saw. And uh, this sort of adds to the general image that they must be under some sort of big scale attack. But actually, it was just these ten guys. Uh, so what he did was after the explosion, he ran through the castle to the castle gates, and he managed to open them up. And then he, uh, this would allow Nobunaga's forces to sort of charge in through the front. Uh, Nobunaga's forces were commanded by a guy called Kanbei Kuroda, who was one of Oda's great strategists at this time. So Kanbei uh, brought loads of troops up through the front gate once it was opened. And then basically, uh, Togashiro could just sit back and watch the castle be captured at that stage. Because the, the defenders were in chaos, the actual, um, like the power pets, etc. of the castle were damaged by the explosions and fires he had created. And many of the defenders were surrendering, falling back. Uh, how I had no idea where <laughs> the attacks were coming from. So it was a very good situation for the Oda forces, they uh, very easily feared up. And then Tokichiro just sort of sat there, sat on one of the towers and just watched the, the victory come. And drank a little bit of sake, which um, while he was raiding some of the storehouses for the gunpowder, they stole a bit of sake, which is uh, win, the, win. the most common alcoholic win. beverage in Japan at this stage. So he just sat there and got wasted and uh, watched victory come. Uh, so basically, he won the battle. He prevented a, uh, a very hard siege assault being forced. You can see here I managed to link up with Tokichiro in uh, one of the final redoubts of the castle. So now we've got all of our units working together to fight for this uh, this little square. I have managed to get here without taking too much damage. Kicho is a little bit a uh, little bit damaged, but it's not so bad. I did um, get quite a lot of lag in this recording. I don't, I don't understand why. Like, sometimes it does, it doesn't. It's else? a little bit annoying. I used a rampage there, and uh, I only did two rampages for the entire battle because everyone was already at excellent condition. So I can't really be bothered to do the rampages if it doesn't give you the health upgrade. So I didn't bother. So I basically have to hack through these two units the and then break through the gate suffering. into Remain the final strong. section of the castle where the Tenshu is. The Our Tenshu is, is the main building of a Japanese style castle. And then just uh, take up Saito. Uh, Tatsuki Saito is sitting up there somewhere. I need to find him and take him out. Shouldn't be too hard. Now back to talking about Tokichiro. His achievement on this battle was basically the last... What's the opposite of a nail in the coffin? I don't know. It was the big thing that finally made Nobunaga just say, alright Tokushiro, you're going to be one of my main retainers, because he had been held back by the fact he was an Ashigaru. But even from the very beginning, even from when Tokushiro initially joined Oda's forces, uh, Nobunaga had treated him as if he was a samurai, um, which is sort of a, a social status. They, he gave him a lot of trust, which is uncommon for an Ashigaru soldier. And the reason was because Tokushiro is essentially a military genius and a social genius. Yeah, always knows what to say. I'm peeking over this gate here, and I saw uh, Tatsuki Sai Tatsuki Sai. Sorry, he's sitting over there with another unit beside him. So I now know there are two enemy units waiting for me. And I start order. pulling off a, a flanking maneuver. It doesn't quite go as I planned, unfortunately. So yeah, Tokichiro uh, had always been trusted because he his strategies were always very uh, very effective. There's a, there's a legend that whenever Nobunaga failed, and he actually failed in his his objectives quite a lot. It was because he had deliberately ignored what Tokichiro had uh, suggested, and that whenever Tokichiro's advice was taken, they always won. So he was uh, quite the strategist, and that's backed up by the fact that when Tokichiro takes command, takes personal command of Oda forces, he uh, basically captures all of Japan in about one year. So he was uh, a very effective leader. So here you go, my my flank attack didn't really work because the AI broke down the gates before I was ready and caused the enemy to charge out and attack one of my forces. I start moving to the back of the castle and I can see the hidden area and there are some people down there. But I don't know how to access it. No which is quite Naya. annoying. Today but I will find out soon enough. So yes, after this battle Tokichiro became a very famous retainer. Not many people liked him because he was only an Ashigaru and there's a sort of social issue of oh should he really be so good? Why should he become so famous? He's just an Ashigaru foot soldier. But yeah, after, after this battle, Nobunaga uh, really knew that Tokichiro was uh, <laughs> the right guy to have on your side. And Tokichiro would be granted increasing amounts of trust by Nobunaga. Ready, set, go! So now I'm fighting with Tatsuki Saito, 
Um, I don't want to kill him quite yet because I want to try and find that secret area. Uh, because at the start of the battle, it's saying Tokichiro Kinoshita wants to speak with Hanbei Kuroda. Not Hanbei Kuroda. It's her. It's Hanbei someone else. I've forgotten his name. It's like Takenaga or something. Hanbei Takenaga. Uh, and I, could, I thought those guys in the secret area I could see were him, like waiting, plotting his strategies. So I was trying to find a way in. You can see I'm using Nobunaga here to try and find a way in. But it didn't look like you could go down there. On the map it seemed that there was a way next to Tokichiro, but um, when I went there I didn't see one. So I need to use Nobunaga to distract Tatsuoki whilst I pull out Tokichiro to try and find that secret route. I start using buffs and I use Berate here to reduce uh, Tatsuoki's attack because that'll buy me a little time. It'll mean I don't have to kill him so quickly, but he won't be killing me in the meantime because he's quite a powerful unit. Toshi Maida starts uh, taking quite a punishment. I'm trying to block here and it didn't work. Um, but then Toshimichi Saito, with his 200 remaining men, charges through and completely decimates Toshi and Tokichiro's units. So I was uh, a little bit worried at this stage. There's the risk that if he did that again, that those units would be wiped out. But I managed to defeat uh, Toshimitsu Saito, which I assume is this guy's brother. Probably his, uh, his older brother, I guess. <laughs> If it was his younger brother, then he'd be very young. So I find I won't realize you can break that piece of wall. And there's Hanbei Takanaka. I, I charge down at him, thinking he's an enemy unit, and pop! He he's just turns into some magical arrival. sparkles and uh, joins me. The now I find this uh, this blob of health, so I pick it up. Tokushiro goes back to almost full health, and now it's simply a matter of cleaning this place up. Looks like Inabayama has fallen into Nobunaga's hands with much less fire and chaos than there was historically. But. Uh, there we did it. Toshi Maida almost died. I gave him a little bit of healing from Kicho. Ah, her healing hands. But it, from now on it shouldn't be too hard. So I take Toshi and just uh, spam blocking moves in order to prevent him dying. Because it will affect my rating at the end of the battle if he dies. And he'll be wounded. Which will mean he won't uh, be really be able to fight in the next battle. And I do like using Toshi because he is one of the, the big Oda retainers who is there. Not just until the very end, but beyond the very end, even when like the Oda clan sort of stopped really being a thing, he was still fighting on for various causes. So he was a, a very big player in this era. So there goes Tatsuoki, he runs off. He wasn't killed in this battle, he uh, he escaped. There are various stories of how he escaped. Uh, some say Nobunaga captured him and then let him go. And some say he had actually fled the castle even before the attack begun because he saw he was going to lose or something like that. He wasn't very confident. But uh, whatever the case, Tatsuoki's gone and we'll probably be seeing him again. The battle's over. Managed to get the S rank so I get good prizes. I get Kogorasu Maru, which is some sort of sword I believe, some rogue's armor, and a whole bunch of gold, which is essentially money. So there's the sword, it looks pretty damn sweet. Only Nobunaga can use it, but it looks pretty cool. So I'm pretty enthusiastic about using that sword. I also got this rogue armor. I think it's the armor that Tatsuki Saito was using. It looks a bit weird actually. And this Hakudo mirror, which improves people's archery ability for some reason. Which, uh, that's pretty useful, I guess. I, haven't, I don't really use the artist very much, but I probably will at some point. Once I'm allowed to use more units uh, simultaneously in the battles, I'll start bringing out some some more interesting things. That's the end of that. That's uh, the end of chapter 3 in fact. So now we're gonna head on to the cutscenes and see uh, how the capture of Mino is gonna affect Nobunaga's life. But uh, actually there are some other chance events that uh, was really make an impact. Inabayama Castle. He renamed it Gifu as a symbol that he intended to unite the land. I'll explain that in a moment, the Gifu thing. To the new land of Gifu came Yoshiaki Ashikaga, younger brother of the former shogun. Yoshiaki had wandered the land after fleeing the capital. Now he saw in the strength of the Oda clan an opportunity to return to the capital and seize power. You can see the Rokaku clan, the uh, bird symbol in the center of the screen is the symbol of the Rokaku clan, which I was talking about last time. <laughs> So we're going to meet the brother of the former Shogun. He's currently deposed. The Shogun is actually over at this stage. It's also not true that Nobunaga was the strongest force in the land. He was one of the weakest actually at this stage. 
Then fine! I will make you Deputy Shogun then! <laughs> you mean you still don't like that? Doesn't this guy have any ambition? <laughs> oh no, not a shred. Women! <laughs> At the capital, there are lots of lovely young women! <laughs> if my Lord Oda is willing, I am sure that we could be ready and on our way to the capital in less than a month. True. To tell the truth, I had already planned on making a visit to the capital. So Nobunaga was basically trolling Yoshiaki an by there. pretending he didn't want to go. This Yoshiaki guy is going to be a, an important tomorrow. character, even though he's insane. Tomorrow? He has the same face as, and has the same voice actor as, Bannon from World in Conflict, which I always find annoying. But anyway, chapter 4, Nobunaga's March on Kyoto. So, Yoshiaki, the brother of the deceased former shogun, comes to Nobunaga, and this uh, gives him some form of legitimacy. Legitimacy, bleh, legitimacy is very capital. important at this stage. He marched there to show the world his resolve, and to show to the heavens and the people that he would defeat chaos. <laughs> Not really, though. The capital and the surrounding area was under the control of Hisahide Matsunaga, the Miyoshi Trio, and the Merchant Council of Sakai. Those Miyoshi Trio are going to be causing us some trouble in the near future, I would gamble. So here we go, he reached Kyoto, suddenly. <laughs> what can a simple country bumpkin like that do? Oh, shut your mouth. We have to get out of here. That's right. We don't want to get caught mm. fighting. He has some Let's pretty cool armor going. looking now. Cool looking armor, sorry. And the peasants of Kyoto did uh, very much fear Nobunaga's approach because they thought he was going to unleash some, uh, some some harsh stuff on them. But he didn't. So it's fine. <laughs> but now look at this. Their party is suddenly attacked by ninjas. Let's uh, let's see how they get through this encounter. Oh snap! Don't worry, he's a beast. He'll take him. <laughs> but they're invisible. For the old cloak trick. Two for the price of one. I see nothing. I see nothing. There's no one here. There's no one here. Help me! Someone help! Maybe Naga's voice actor changed for that line, which always confuses me. Hatsuye! <laughs> Nagamasa! You protect Lord Yoshiaki! As I Nagamasa's here for some reason. He also changed his voice actor. Poor Yoshino. <laughs> Kicho, on the other hand, is uh, pretty much dealing with this scenario fine. Well, I say fine. <laughs> it's getting worse by the second. Oh snap, who's this guy? Some silver guy shows up. She is astonished. My name is Mitsuhide Akechi. I have come to request that you allow me to fight for the Oda clan. An important character in our legend, Mitsuhide Akechi. True courage and bravery. I am pleased to have finally found such a one. We'll be seeing a lot of this guy. Quite a lot. Although historically he was rather insignificant. And Nobunaga knows. Mitsuhide Akechi is the man who will cause Nobunaga to die. And in the legend, he foresees this for some reason, but does not very much about it. So we've got Mitsuhide Akechi. Mitsuhide Akechi actually joined the Oda clan uh, before the Battle of Inabayama, so two years ago. This this march to Kyoto took place a year after Inabayama. So we actually already have Mitsuhide Akechi, but in the legend, he shows up now. Mitsuhide was a servant of Yoshiaki, the, uh, the shogun's brother we, we've strategy. been seeing. But he uh, randomly decides to come and serve Oda uh, about one year after Yoshiaki was thrown out of Kyoto. And then Yoshiaki spent two more years wandering the land Lord, before they were finally reunited under the service of Nobunaga. My name is Hanbei Takenaka. And here he is. 
I wish to end this hundred years of war. <laughs> a year later, Allow he's finally joining up. I guess that was just a weird My forces uh, would be strengthened with strategies such as yours. aspect of the game cutscenes being placed in a not massively chronological order. My lord. Always confusing. So Nobunaga has a pretty good look going now, actually. As does Hideyoshi. Today, and I believe Koshi Maida and Nakanibe Nibe do Master as well. Niwa and one from Master Shibata and call myself Hashiba. Hideyoshi Hashiba. That's gonna be my new name. <laughs> so finally his name's changed to the name I remember. So that's gonna make things a lot easier for me. My lord. This it's not his historical name, actually. Just to confuse things further, Hideyoshi Hashiba wasn't what he called himself historically. He called himself a, a Hideyoshi Totoimi or something. But I'm going to call him Hideyoshi Hashiba because that's just the name I have in my head. So, upon reaching Kyoto, we get all this cool stuff. We get some rival warlord's armor, some officer's armor and helmet set for Hideyoshi, flamboyant armor for Toshie Maida, and then some majestic armor and helmet for Nagahide Niwa. And for some reason, our base is now Honoji Temple. Which uh, is uh, a famous location in Nobunaga's legend, but we'll come to that later. I think Nobunaga actually at this stage wouldn't have been at Honoji. His base was still in Gifu. And I guess now I'll explain. Gifu, the reason why I said earlier that naming it Gifu was a symbol that he would unite the land is because in like the Japanese uh, characters in, it, in their kanji language, Gifu is sort of similar to the Chinese word uh, Wu Wei or, or or Mount Key, I think it's sometimes called. Um, basically, he's named it after the location where the warlord to unify China began his campaign. So he's trying to signify that he will also be unifying an empire, and that empire is Japan. Japanese culture was very much borrowed from China at this stage. It, it became more and more, more and more divergent over time, but Japanese culture and Chinese culture are very similar uh, to the extent that they they could sort of understand each other's languages at this stage, at least written down, not orally, but written down, they could sort of understand each other's languages. So, I know the uh, the video's over, but I want to talk a little bit about the aftermath of the battle, uh, Siege of Inabuyama Castle, just to make it clear what happened. So, Nobunaga captures Inabuyama. Saito runs off, and he ends up joining with uh, the Asakura clan or something. He'll, we'll see him again later. Uh, and he renames the castle Gifu to represent how he's going to take over the land. But then uh, he actually in in about 1562, so five years before the siege of, in of Inabiyama Castle, he had been asked by the Emperor of Japan to come to Kyoto. And so in many ways the capture of Inabiyama was sort of a response to this request because Nobunaga was actually very loyal to the Emperor uh, or at least he uh, acted very loyal to the emperor. So he he swore back in 1562 <clears throat> that he would capture Kyoto in order to help out the emperor because the emperor was in trouble. Uh, but of course it took him many, many years to do this because he didn't have the resources, especially back in 1562, right after Okehizama and before the conquest of Mino. And then, um, so he captures Inabiyama and then right after he captures it again, the emperor sends him another message saying, please, you have to come to Kyoto and help me. Um, but he still doesn't quite have the legitimacy. Uh, he doesn't really have a reason to go to Kyoto um, because he doesn't have um, written proof that the emperor asked him to go. He only has a verbal request from the emperor's retainers coming and speaking to him. And without that written proof, he can't legitimize a westward campaign to the people. And even though this was a very warish period, there was still a sort of vague public morality that if you were fighting a war for no particular reason, uh, the public would turn against you. So the commander still had to be wary that they were fighting wars for reasons. So Nobunaga still needed this reason. And the arrival of Yoshiaki in 1568 was this reason. Yoshiaki was the brother of the shogun who just died through, oh, he died three years ago. So Yoshiaki had been wandering the land for three years, looking for someone to help him retake his position as shogun. And, uh, and restore the shogunate, uh, which was the, the ruling body of Japan. So he finds Nobunaga. Nobunaga is willing to help him. Uh, as part of his promise to the emperor, he realizes he can use Yoshiaki uh, as a legitimate reason for him to be going to Kyoto. He can say, I'm going to restore the shogunate. He can make that his, uh, his public, um, like publicity campaign for, the, for his, his march. 
and make the people support him. So finally he now has the opportunity to go and he goes uh, pretty much straight away once he realizes he, realizes he can do this. Now in the game he just appeared in Kyoto. Um, that may or may not be true. Some sources I've read say he just marched there and nothing happened on the way. But the source I'm intended, well I'm inclined to believe, is that uh, on the way he had to fight the Rokaku clan. I talked about the Rokaku clan last time. They were in the South Umi province and were at war with the Azai, Nobunaga's ally. And uh, I talked about how the Rokoku clan could have been destroyed by Azai, but was allowed to resurge because of Azai's ambitions in Mino. But Nobunaga comes across Rokoku because they're essentially their territory is exactly between Kyoto and Inubiyama, so he has to march through it to get there. Uh, and it's the it's the easiest route, so it'd be very annoying to go around it. So he uh, he actually ends up fighting them. He takes about thirty thousand troops, and he very very easily defeats the Rokoku clan. Uh, he just he just wipes them out. He just walks through them, captures all of their castles. He has they had lots of castles in that area. He just captures them all like very easily, and uh, moves on to Kyoto. And then he takes Kyoto very peacefully, and actually restores the shogunate. So after three years uh, without government, Japan has its government restored, at least in puppet form, because Yoshiaki becomes a puppet shogun of Nobunaga, at least historically. I'm not 100% sure the game portrays that as what's happened, but uh, you never know. I can't remember what happens after this stage, unfortunately. But we'll find out soon enough. We'll find out soon enough, of course. Anyway, so I think I'll leave it at that for now. So Nobunaga has Kyoto, and now he just has to pacify it and uh, hold off anyone else who wants to try and take it from him, now they've realised that Kyoto is takeable. <laughs> and after that, he'll uh, he'll be in a very good position to potentially get that Emperor's Mandate to take over the rest of Japan, which is what he really, and what everyone else really, wants in this situation, and was pretty much the whole purpose of the Sengoku Judai. But of course he has many enemies still, both in the west and east. He's very much relying on Ieyasu Tokugawa to defend him from the Takeda clan and the remnants of the Imagawa clan. Um, I think around this time uh, Ieyasu was actually allied to the Takeda clan as well, so there was a very, very vague triple alliance which protected him at this stage. Uh, but the Ieyasu alliance with, Toka, with the Takeda clan uh, broke down pretty fast once the Imagawa clan was destroyed, because then their borders linked uh, when the Imagawa clan disappeared. The Takeda and Tokugawa borders linked, and that caused tensions, and they very, very quickly went to war. But I think we'll uh, we'll see some more of that later on. So I'm going to wish you uh, a very nice day. Until the next time on Legend of Nobunaga, where we'll be starting Chapter 4, which is strangely entitled Nobunaga's March on Kyoto, even though he's already there. But we'll, I don't know, I guess we'll see what that's about. And we'll see uh, how Mitsuhide Akechi, the character we've just been introduced to, uh, makes his mark on Nobunaga's legend. And there'll be plenty of time for me to talk about what he really did in real life as well. But it's it's not too impressive, the real life. I much prefer the, the legendary presentation of Mitsuhide Akechi, but you'll see, you'll see. Have a very nice day, and I'll see you soon. But